Hello, welcome to the Sustainable Energy for All Forum here in Brooklyn, New York. Uh, we're having a conversation at the forum about how we can go further, faster together to meet Sustainable Development Goal 7, which is striving to deliver universal access to energy by 2030 to everybody and also to scale up efficiency and, and renewables. I'm very pleased to be here with Barbara Buchner. Welcome. Um, Barbara, you know, you've been at the forum over the last couple of days and central to the forum, particularly today, is a discussion about energy access. So that's access to electrification, access yeah. to clean cooking solutions. Yeah. And this is a problem that um, many face globally, um, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa yeah. and Asia. Um, but what's very interesting to, you know, in terms of having a conversation today is you're a, an expert on finance. <laughs> And uh, the discussion has been about how do we actually unlock finance to help with this cause. So what would your take be on that? You know, where are we? Where do we need to go? Great. Well, thanks so much, Jane. Yeah. Thanks so much for having me here. It's a true pleasure and it's been an excellent forum. I've, just, I've learned a lot here. And yet, no, I think what I've heard again and again is that, you know, while there are many barriers and challenges, certainly access to finance and like the, the scale yeah. of finance remains their key challenge. And if you just like, you know, take a step back and we at CPI have been since 2011 actually tracking uh, global investments into green climate uh, finance more generally. So both adaptation and adaptation, including where possible, you know, that the SDG goals. What you can see here for based on our latest figures is that more money than ever is currently being invested in climate action. And that is after leveling off in 2012 and decreasing in 2013. We actually have now 392 billion okay. US dollars that is going, is directed towards uh, climate action. That is positive news. Mm -hmm. But at the same time, if you um, look, you know, just in the context of renewable energy, we've seen that out of the 392, it's 246 billion is being spent on renewable energy. But if you look at the figures that the International Energy Agency predicts, uh, we can see that we need roughly a, a trillion or cumulative 16.5 trillion US dollars by 2020 to get on a two degrees pathway, including, you know, the, the goals that, that you've been talking about. So, so I think, um, you know, my main takeaway is, you know, we are making progress, mm -hmm. but what we really need is to get finance at scale and we need to understand better where we are, particularly in the context of the energy access uh, investment flows in order to see what's the entry points to really address some of the barriers and then scale up. So I'd be interested, you know, as you are the, yeah. the expert on energy access, you know, whether, whether that is like an assessment, assessment that you see, you know, confirmed from an energy access perspective and what is some of the insights that you are having from, yeah. from your work in the area? Yeah, good question. So, <laughs> <laughs> you know, so we, we had the global tracking framework launched um, here um, on Monday. Right. And <laughs> so it talked about what progress have we been making on energy access. Mm. And, uh, you know, basically 2014 latest data, and mm. uh, we still have over a billion people without access to electricity. Wow. Um, and, you know, particularly in sub-Saharan Africa and particularly in rural areas, we're seeing um, in those rural areas, uh, the number of people without access mm. growing as, as the solutions struggle to keep pace with the growth in, in population. Mm. Mm. And, uh, and then when it comes to the other side of access, which is, access to clean cooking and, and technologies and fuels, things that do have a health implications, we're actually seeing, you know, we're really not keeping up with the expansion of population. The yeah. solutions aren't rolling out fast enough. Yeah. And so, um, you know, the gap is growing and it's over three billion today. So yeah. people have been discussing today, um, you know, over the last couple of days, you know, we have 13 years to meet the goals we all set ourselves internationally. Mm. So how do we actually how do we actually get there? And the critical question on finance is one that's been at the centre of the conversations we've been having over the last mm. um, at least a year, <laughs> yeah. and some of them with you. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you know, while there's a lot of really good information, the information has tended to be um, at a very sort of um, macro level yeah. and when you start asking the question about you know the, the global tracking framework identifies 20 countries where you really absolutely need to work to meet this goal because they right. represent over 80% of the, the places with a challenge 
for both electrification and cooking. And if you try and ask the question about, well, what's happening in those places? And, you know, it, it, there isn't a very detailed picture. And so that's something that we've been struggling mm. with over um, recent months. And I know you've been working on a lot of solutions <laughs> to, um, to financial challenges. Mm. I mean, have you seen things come up through your work on the, the innovation lab that have, you know, <laughs> you know, possible um, opportunities on the access space. Yeah, no, absolutely. And I do think, you know, we see lots of, you know, experiments and pilots out there. And what we do in the Global Innovation Lab for Climate Finance is really try to, you know, apply a new approach. So we crowdsource ideas because, as we can see from the forum yeah. here, there's a wide range of actors from very different, you know, areas that really have a lot of knowledge. We crowdsource ideas, we then kind of are guided by a very high level public and private investors, including, you know, commercial banks, institutional investors, um, treasuries and others, who really identify those ideas that they see have a potential to address some of the barriers in the market and therefore come up with solutions that are scalable, that are replicable and that can, you know, enable us to you know, basically shift the business models and the yeah. paradigm. And so in the context of the lab, we have had a number of ideas that were very much in the energy access space mm -hmm. um, and also like, you know, really trying to improve access to energy um, while, you know, reducing the, the basically the climate risk um, mm -hmm. of energy. We've had like a debt fund uh, for energy access. We've had like um, insurance products uh, such as an energy savings insurance that really helps emerging economies to adopt more energy efficient technologies. And, and we've had a number of, of other ideas, but I think the bigger message for me is that I see a lot of potential to, you know, apply the lab model also to the energy access space yeah. and really have a focused attention to energy access by, you know, bringing together public and private investors, but like crowdsourcing the ideas from those the practitioners on the ground yeah. who really know what they need and what is specific to the specific regions. So I do see uh, and I hope that, that there will be uh, an opportunity in the future to maybe apply the lab model more to the energy access mm -hmm. space. Mm -hmm. I mean, one of the things that um, we've been kickstarting, mm -hmm. um, I, you know, maybe we should talk about that in a, in a, in a <laughs> minute about what we're doing with you, but mm -hmm. as we, we have a, a piece of work going on which is you know which one dimension of it is to actually go in and have a look at what entrepreneurs local financiers c customers in the energy space yes. particularly those that aren't on the grid what their needs are what their challenges are and uh, you know see if we can really understand that and it's you know even the preliminary work that's coming out of that the, yeah. the feedback is you know in some places they they see the pay-as-you-go models are uh, are extremely bankable but even when they're very bankable they hit problems in going to scale which is yeah. you know pro and, and it's a whole sort of ecosystem of challenges yeah. and it, it, it spans things that are financial like you know yeah. issues with local currency risk mm. issues with the the challenges of scaling up many small projects into a package of projects that makes it attractive for larger investors yeah. um to those that are about awareness you know there are some really great innovative business and financing models that are taking off in some markets but if we really want to scale them they need to go to other markets and just kind of raising awareness of the potential that these have is is, yeah. is a challenge and you know, and it's not just that; it's one of human capacity because um, <coughs> you actually, you know, you need people to, to create a market and mm. people to distribute energy solutions mm. to um, market those solutions to finance those solutions and, and building that capacity um, locally is, is mm. also something that mm. people are hitting up against as a as a, as a challenge on the ground. Um, but you know, maybe just to you know. It'd be great to hear, you know, we've been doing a little bit of, of work on uh, energy access together. Yes. You know, where, where, where are you seeing things yourself? No, and I think, uh, you know, I think it's fun. The project we just started with you and um, together also with the World Bank, what we are doing is basically start, you know, showing the baselines. So where are we today in mm -hmm. terms of energy access investment flows? Because again, this is yeah. really what enables you then to understand where money is flowing to, where it's not flowing to. Yeah and whether you know, it actually meets the needs that you are also like yeah. trying to identify in the market. And then also it helps you understand over time you know, whether 
the way money is flowing at the moment actually is effective and you know what are some of the innovative yeah. solutions that you use. So the project is basically an inventory of global uh, public and private uh, flows committed to energy access yeah. in the 20 high impact countries and it really is supposed to provide you a robust, a sound, a transparent snapshot of how money is flowing along its life cycle from the actors to sources through the instruments, the business models, to actually the assets and the energy tiers. Mm -hmm. but I think this really will enable us to create the first understanding of where we really are and where we need to go in order to meet the goals and fill the gap, but also then really get a little bit more granular in you know, how can we come up with the solutions in the areas and attract the actors that currently are still at the margins of, of this. So I'm very excited about, about this work. Um, uh, again, we are working um, CPI is working more on the international side, trying to come up with the international flows. We are complemented by specific work by the World Bank on some domestic case studies. But I think together it will give you really a good first snapshot of where we are. And, you know, hopefully over time we will be able to refine that and use that as a, as a way to, to really measure progress towards the, the sustainable development goals. And, uh, you know, we're hoping that by um, having a look at this information, which we, we should be able to share with everyone in <laughs> September, all being well, um, that you know, we really will be able to have an open conversation about you know, finance that's flowing and, and as you say, yeah. where it's flowing. So from an access perspective, is all yeah. of the finance going into solutions for those that are remote from the grid um, you know, through you know, basic energy services like mobile phone charging, lanterns, mm. lighting, is it going into grid modernization extension? Is it going into the microgrids that we've mm. been hearing so much about at this forum? Um, but, you know, understanding that space will allow mm. us to have a conversation with the broad set of actors about where, where solutions are needed and what's preventing things happening. Yeah. And it may be that those things aren't always the finance challenges because we've been hearing a lot here about, you know, we need a, a, a integrated policy approach that yeah. allows centralized grid-based solutions to coexist and grow together with decentralized solutions so mm. we really can tap the full potential of the market and get mm. those services to people as soon as possible and certainly yeah. by 2030. Yes, no, so again I think the forum here and I think what you've mentioned is it's really a first step in, in getting us in the real direction so I'd be curious just before we will have to stop this conversation yes. <laughs> Just to hear from your side, you know, what is kind of your key takeaway from, from, you know, what is the next step that is needed in order to really, you know, getting us on the right track? And is there any specific success factor that you would like to, uh, you know, kind of mention yeah. here? Yeah. Um, well, I was just in um, Abidjan in um, Cote d'Ivoire last week mm. um, because our Africa regional hub that mm. works with countries across Africa to do energy planning, to do investment planning, mm. they were getting together to have a discussion about where next. Right. And a hot topic on the discussion was finance and unlocking finance. Right. Um, but you know, there were, there were other factors that were put on the table. So 44% mm. um, of countries across Africa lack clear electrification plans that allow this decentralized and centralized solutions to coexist. So mm. that's a real opportunity yeah. to, you know, to really sort of put those in place. Um, there are issues with credit worthiness of utilities that are a major player in the sector, um, you know, but also political commitment and a mm. recognition of the urgency of the challenge that people crowd in around this, mm. that um, many actors are active in, in many countries and, yeah. and just having them come together so their interventions are streamlined and they're easy for those at the country, you know, on the, on the um, government side yeah. and businesses to really understand how to navigate their space yeah. and take, you know, work together for, for the best outcomes. So I think, you know, there's a lot of things that, you know, we want to work towards, but um, you know, there was really one very positive outcome of that discussion is people are really committed to getting this yeah. done. And I think, you know, if we can um, provide some actionable, very um, good information that helps move that conversation forward yeah. and uh, work out how we can bring people together to, around solutions, this is going to be a great contribution. So thank you for right. your help with that. Well, thank you so much. And again, I think it's time to move from talk to action. So yeah. we're here. <laughs>